Meanwhile, in this so-called so peaceful fishing village where they boil people. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with a brand new series. We are just on this whole Eastern Asian type of kick right now with all the shows that I've been reacting to, but that just happens to be how they were released, guys. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Anyways, this is a brand new series that is on, I'm not sure what the American equivalent is, but we have it on Disney Plus here in Canada, and it is Shogun. And I've been very much looking forward to this because I, in case you haven't noticed on this channel, I really love things that do have to do with Japanese culture, especially historical culture. I do think it's one of the more interesting and beautiful and intricate cultures, if not somewhat brutal and crazy sometimes, but either way, I enjoy it. So when I saw the preview for this a couple months ago, I was like, heck yes, I'm tuning in. So here we are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read the synopsis that's on the website so I have an idea at a high level what this show is gonna be about. It says it's set in Japan in the year 1600. Lord Yoshi Torang Tornaga is fighting for his life as his enemies in the Council of Regents unite against him when a mysterious European ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village. So that's pretty good. That lets us know what's kind of going on here. 16, 1700s is kind of when the old Japan started to fall apart. And that's the Japan that was completely excluded from the rest of the world. If you guys have been watching my Blue Eyed Samurai reactions and you probably already have some of that history, they talked about it there. But yes, Japan isolated itself from the rest of the world for a very long time and slowly but surely other people start to push their way in of course the Europeans being the closest so I'm assuming that this is probably going to be brought into the storyline as well but yes I'm excited to jump into this I don't think I need to say much more so let's hurry up and do that but just before I do if you're new here welcome thank you so much for coming if you'd like to be notified when I do more uploads of this particular show or anything else that I'm reacting to please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and if you like this video I'd appreciate it so much if you showed some love with some thumbs up and comment Comments below. All right, that out of the way, let's get into this episode because it's a bit long right about now. That is a creepy looking ship. That's like a ghost ship. For decades, Portuguese Catholics have richly profited from trade, trade in Japan. They have kept its whereabouts hidden from their sworn enemies, the European Protestants. In Osaka, the reigning Taiko has died, leaving behind an heir too young to rule. Five warrior lords are now trapped in a bitter struggle. All of them seek the title of, oh God, hold on, I wasn't ready. All of them seek the title that would make their power absolute. Right, Shogun, okay. What is that? I know very little about seafaring, folks. I get seasick, so me and boats, we're just not close like that. Time has come for you to start making plans. For what? It's the Japans. Japans, listen to yourself, that is the scurvy talking. Ew. Then it's back to Holland, rich, having gone round the world. See how everyone just wants to exploit. Why is it the Europeans always want to exploit other countries? At my age, you draw your line. I mean, you look like you're one foot in the grave already, to be fair. I mean, I can only imagine uh, dying of scurvy can't be a fun. That is the breath of the Almighty. He's calling us. He's Wait, what's this us business? What's this we? I don't speak French. You might be ready to leave this world, but he still looks pretty healthy. Although, really, I kind of prefer he go back to Europe. Leave the Japans alone, please. I can only imagine though, this is another reason why sea life just never appealed to me. Just being out there for months and having no, oh my God, he did it, sorry. <laughs> um, and just having no release, surrounded by water you can't drink. I'll stick the land, thanks. So I'm to understand that the Spaniards at least were trading with Japan. So they did it, kept it quiet, obviously for their own gain, but I guess to protect Japan to some degree. And then now everyone else got wind of it and they wanna get rich too. But it looks like they just wanna take over, like he said. Okay, we got a Catholic. Push it back. Push it back. Push it back out to sea. Y'all, no, seriously, someone get out there and push it right back. Send it right back to your... I'm glad you notified those guys. I'm sorry. Europeans in this age were not nice people. They just took over and just destroyed everything. So no, it's a no. It's a hard no. Ooh. The historically accurate shoes. Don't touch them, they're ill. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, I shouldn't be that judgy, it's not his fault. But also a lot of Europeans just didn't brush, you know. Oh, violence, okay, good. My man's like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Shh. There we go. 
You know what they say about the energy of stealing things from a dead ship, right? That is a fantastic hat. And a fantastic horse. Look at that tail. <laughs> there he is. I love this actor. That would drive me nuts. Something on my chin right here. <laughs> Just saying, for me, I'd be like... It's nice to hear him, because I know he's probably done more work in Japan, but all the stuff I've ever seen him in has been English, so he hasn't gotten a chance to speak his native tongue much. So it's nice to hear him actually getting to do a Japanese-speaking part in a big production. Oof, beef from afar. Historical hairdos are always so interesting to me because like here you are young with your nice full hairline and you're purposefully shaving it off. Like if they just waited 10 years, 20 years for some of them, th their hairline was gonna do that anyway. Like why not enjoy your full headed time? I feel like someone who balded early in Japanese history enforced this style to make themselves feel better. I love kimonos. Damn. Tell me what you really think. その間終わりのはその方のご退路に立てつく車を退ず有料してください。うん。自らを乱そうなことは思いもよらぬことじゃ。ニオシャンの。うん。昨日は母君が江戸へ出発なされた。何の前触れもなしにじゃ。もしか
Yeah, there's no way you're taking my kid. You're taking me out first. That's all there is to it. No. 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 You're not taking my baby. No, no. This is not a society that would work for me because I'm taking out everybody in that room and then myself before you take my baby. Uh-uh. Who's this now? Not you listening to the Catholics, too. I'm trying to remember, was it? Fife is like land, right? They don't understand you. Yeah, I can imagine how much that must stink. Oh, God. You fucking savages. Oh, we're the savages. Okay. You keep on him. In case I don't come back. They'll just let him die. You know that, right? Yeah. Let's just humble him a little bit, please. A little more. You came to our shores, sir. And talk about we the savages. Be good. Yeah, not cat, not Protestant. Our prayers in Japan must be good. If this is how he treats guests. Guests? No. Sir, we didn't invite you. Piss on his whole damn country. Work him over some more, please. Thank you. He hasn't learned his lesson yet. Oh. Yeah, colonizer. Yeah, that's what you wanted, sir. You want to talk about peeing on something? Precisely. I'm sorry, but guests? No one invited you. And you're here giving demands. Hmm. Know your place. And again, I'm not saying they deserve to be peed on, for the record. I'm just saying it's the attitude that colonizers have. Coming to a foreign country and making demands. No, sir. You find out what the local customs are first. You learn about where you are. And then you ask things. Because I know if they showed up in your home country and made demands, you would have, you would have treated them worse. Let's be fair. He's not Catholic. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, now you know the stakes. Sorry to that man. He just wanted to be Catholic. His face! I have to know who you are and how you came to this land. Who are you? Your God. First make that distinction, you pig's prick. Really? This is the time to be fighting in between each other? That's why you don't tick off the translator. <laughs> He's like, yes, gladly. He didn't say that part. Okay, this man actually thinks for himself. Exactly. He's like, your little uh, religious wars mean nothing to me. What does special way mean? Damn. That's a harsh life. I agree, more fun. Your mama has sense. Mm. So you got good land, got it. Exactly, and they're too dumb to realize it. Hmm, you're only one person, though. That's a, what's, what's with that bloodline? Why is it fearsome? Girl said you better turn into a villain. Quick. You don't want to be the Shogun. That's exactly why you're the best candidate to be the Shogun. But also the right thing to say in mixed company. Yeah, well, you already told us what's going to happen. But what can you do? Are we bathing them or are we cooking them? Okay, so I guess we're boiling them. 
They really could be that resistant to a bath. But yeah, I'm thinking that's kind of traumatizing for everybody though. Like I'm sure y'all could have done that a lot more peacefully. Cause no matter how much you may not like someone, you have to be a complete sociopath not to be affected by someone literally screaming to death. Oh, so that was what he meant by a special way of taking them out. So that Lord's just twisted. That's disgusting. Y'all, I saw someone take off a head with one swipe. Can we not do that to them if we have to? Yeah, really. Sure. I'm so sorry you have to say that out loud. Oh, she that kind of freak. She's like, you will pay attention to me, sir. But back in these times, a woman had to do whatever she had to do. And one of the fastest ways to a man's head is through his crotch. Hmm, turns out you're more of a freak than you thought, huh? Like I said, he's more of a freak than he thought. I mean, they didn't have TV back then, so I guess. I'm kind of scared for this servant dude though. Like, won't he get in trouble for touching the Lord's things? He may not live after this. Meanwhile, in this so-called so peaceful fishing village where they boil people. Oh, they washed you. Thank the heavens. Take notes. Oh, they left you naked. <laughs> Welcome to paper doors. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, how many of them have you boiled? Terrifying. This is very tight. <laughs> she said, hands off. Well, they were going to come to him if he didn't go there. Oh, you're already given up. Interesting. Wow, y'all just talk about this man's already gone. That's so horrible. Mm, that is the problem. Gotcha, they did have, that's why they showed the guns in the beginning. Look. He said, nice trying to plan. I already see you get on the boat. Oh, did you? Okay. Mm, I know everything. Nice try, though. Yeah, exactly. Or we, that's right. He's still alive. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. Look at him. He's like, my uncle's a little bit. Spy. It's his land. Bow to the bastard Sama if you want to live. The money's like a thing here. Exactly. Learn. Learn. This is what the Portuguese, you can at least learn from them, is that this is not your house. Sir, you speak Japanese. You must know if my crew is alive. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> oh. Dang. Why? They don't care. <laughs> I like this guy. He's my favorite so far. I didn't catch your name, friend. Oh, a friend now. Okay. Rodriguez. And I'm a Spaniard who sails for the Portuguese. I'm a good friend. Do us both a favor. Lo Rodriguez. She ain't yours no more. That's what happens when you show up and think you're the king. I mean, let's not talk about what happens in the future, but for now. These people are godless savages. Or maybe they just don't give a shit what you do. Exactly. Exactly. Hi. Oh, learning. But anyways, I have a feeling that as this time goes on, he's gonna recognize, excuse me, recognize that colonizer mindset around them being godless savages is a little general, a little wrong. Can you sweep? Good job. Never learn. But does it roll quickly, right? <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry, the fact that this man is literally someone who pirates for the ship and he can't swim. 
<laughs> That's some Caribbean stuff right there. Yeah, no. Once again, it's a landlubber's life for me. You aren't going to get me out there for all the money. All the money in the world. At least he's trying to save them, though. Okay, at least you learned that word. I was going to say, yelling at them in English is not going to help during a panic situation. Okay, well, they owe you now. Rodrigo Sama, your pilot is somewhere where I come from. We don't leave a man behind. Again, you're not where you come from. Wounds you to take. It's okay. Yeah, this man needs to learn to be respectful. Again, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to be heard, but again, respect that he is not home. Because I know that if he went to the royal court back in England, he would not be walking up and talking to people like this. Oh. I'll bring him up. Me. Yeah, do you want to risk your life for a foreigner? <laughs> Why do you care? You're a psycho, but I will give you this. At least you are uh, ballsy enough to try this. Also, you know, those European people are built different. You should probably should have used another Euro-sized person to take his quite literal dead weight back up this hill. I know, it's annoying, right? He's cocky. That's why you should let his ass go and then just accidentally cut the rope. And he's dead. I would just have knocked his ass over. Just push him over. I don't like this Englishman. He's a little too cocky. I know, it's true in nature, but I don't like it. Oh, Jesus. It's those shoes, man. They're not meant for these slick surfaces. What the hell is he doing? Yeah, they do that here. Really? Seppuku because you can't? A valiant intent, my lord. Hmm. No, this man sucks, but... This Englishman needs to understand that these people are not what he thinks they are. They've been surviving for centuries without your intervention. Through her grief? Ew. That's a waste. But they'll probably end up taking your lives anyway. I think it's so funny that they're both calling each other barbarians. Ooh, I like this shot. I'm listening. Don't you have a cross, though? Okay. She said, I'm Christian, but I'm also Japanese. Uh, yeah, I see it, unfortunately. That man was going to kill himself up on that cliff. Yeah, welcome to Japan. Seppuku's a real thing. It shows his death was better and can I man hope for. I don't know. Peacefully in your sleep? Too long, too hard to get here. I won't succumb to this madness. I've learned to come. It's funny, I thought you washed up by accident. Mmm. Look at the truth just spilling out. Which is why I'm warning you. Please go to the Portuguese as soon as I arrive. You think he told you that without a plan? You arrogant. I won't die in this wretched land. They don't want you here either, bro. Now tell me what you see. And tell me, when you set eyes on Ozark, if you really think our world is the hill. Thank you. Thank you. Time you recognized. Just like when y'all went to Africa for the first time and recognized that you weren't the pinnacle of anything. What kind of man wields power in a land like this? Mm. This guy. 
with that haircut. There's a saying out here that every man. Oh, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. Oh, thank God. She just shouldn't have that as her last memory of her son. Ooh, I like this CGI. Very well done. No, honey, he doesn't wash. Look away. That's right. You're learning. You gotta recognize, you don't actually have to respect these people, but you need to show it. Just like you do back home. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that was the first episode of Shogun. And they definitely gave us a good idea of what we're going to be dealing with in this season. I think they did an excellent job of giving us the landscape, what Japan is like right now, who our main players are, and what's at stake for our lead character. And so with the way we started off the episode with him going to Osaka, which is one of the bigger cities that was there. Apparently, he's, uh, he's from Edo. So we find out that he goes there because it's with the current leadership of Japan. Japan as we know it is split amongst five rulers and he's one of them and he's going even though he is aware of the fact that there is possibly some foul play that's going to be happening there he knows that at least some of the other lords are not fans of his and it's established that none of these guys really get along they're constantly disagreeing but apparently the last Lord who's passed away recently, he was kind of like the tempering rod that kept everything in balance, despite the fact that these Lords did not necessarily like each other. But now that he's gone, he does have an heir, but that heir, as we, can, as we saw in the episode, is maybe 10 years old. Point is too young to be taken seriously as a leader. So basically it's a free for all. They know this. They know that unfortunately, some of these Lords are looking at this as a golden opportunity to take the same position that the late, late Lord had and basically wipe out any other resistance to become the most powerful man in Japan. And so we see that our lead character is aware of this and he doesn't necessarily want this. He thinks it should follow the succession line. But as he discovered at this meeting, they basically, the other four lords have ganged up and decided that he is the problem. And the reasons that they've cited is that he's grown his his kingdom a little too much. They said they kept mentioning fives. So you've doubled your fives. So bottom line is they're scared that because of how large his kingdom is becoming, that he's going to just inevitably take over. And we see him basically saying, look, I haven't grown it all that much. All the stuff that I've done, yeah, it probably was somewhat strategic, but I haven't done it with the idea of taking over any other territories or so he says. So anyways, that doesn't exactly go well. They basically said that, you know what, we don't trust you. And then we discover that the lady of the house, the mother of the heir went to his kingdom because one of the people, I guess one of the one of her relatives, that's what it was. One of her relatives recently gave birth and she wanted to be there for that. However, he was accused of keeping her there as a hostage because that was the only way to ensure that if he came to Osaka, they wouldn't do anything to harm him on arrival. So they basically said, look, if you don't return her within so many days, we're going to consider that an act of war basically, and we're going to come after you. But we find out that he is actually very astute. He very much knows what's going on. He already had an idea that these lords had something up their sleeves and so it's just good to know that he's got a few uh, chess pieces in motion right now so a part of me is wondering if he did request for this lady to maybe show up and be a little bit of an insurance policy just in case especially since it looks like he really does care about this young lord and does not want him to end up being a casualty of this dispute but anyhow while this is happening we see that there is a British well it's a Dutch ship which has some British soldiers on it I guess British and German but anyway they are on this boat because they have discovered that the Portuguese have been trading with Japan for some time. But of course, the Portuguese are withholding that trade information with them. And also, they're just there's just the, the overall giant Catholic versus Protestant battle that's been going on for ages. But back then, for those who are unaware, there was a very bloody battle between Catholics and Protestants. Like when I say bloody, I'm, I'm being very literal. They would literally wipe out groups of people who refused to convert to Catholicism. But anyway, we see that this ship is headed to want to find Japan because they want to get their piece of this wealth that right now Portugal is way ahead of the rest of Europe as far as their riches and their reach. And other European nations are like, that's not fair. We want to be rich too. We don't want to keep having to be at your mercy because of this money than this power you have. So we see that this boat has come there and that this lead character, John, I believe his name was, he has the specific goal of finding these 
Portuguese from Catholic bases and wiping them out in their entirety so that they can supplant it with their own new trade agreements and basically take over, as he said, uh, the Jap Japan and make them work with them instead and cut out the Catholics. So that was the plan, but we see that because they'd never come to these waters before and they did not have all the proper navigational information, they almost died at sea. We see that said they had over 500 ships, they were down to one. And even on that crew, we see only 10 men survived out of God knows how many people were on that one boat. So it was a very rough passage, but they did manage to quite frankly, accidentally end up there. I say accidentally because they had no idea that, that they were on the right course. But anyway, they get captured and understandably the Japanese are like, we don't know who you are, but they're not completely ignorant of foreigners at this point because there has been so many Portuguese, uh, well, between traders, but also the, uh, what do you call them again? Missionaries that would have shown up and actually established small, it looks like they have small, what would you even call them? Not camps, but bases. Yeah, that's the word. They have small bases that they have already established in Japan to try to spread Catholicism. And as we saw at the beginning of the episode with that one Japanese man singing in Latin with his cross, they have affected some of the Japanese people there. So anyway, they arrived there and just like, just like most colonizers, particularly British colonizers back in that time, they arrive and think that they're supposed to be able to set dictate terms and that they're the bosses there, particularly John. And they're taught pretty quickly that that is not the case, that they are not even guests because they did not ask to arrive. They did not go through any form of formalities to show up there. They simply literally crash landed and expect to be treated in a certain way when there's literally no reason for the Japanese to even trust them, let alone invite them in and treat them well, so to speak. So we see that John is very petulant. He's very arrogant. He's also obviously very determined, very hardy and very smart. But that arrogance, <laughs> that arrogance and that ignorance are definitely his biggest downfalls at the moment. The, the fact that he's calling them savages, they're godless savages, and that he thinks he's better than they are already and that they should basically think of him as God's gift because he's British. These are the things that he's got to learn the hard way that's just not going to fly in Japan. And we see eventually he does meet up with the uh, the <laughs> Spaniard who lets him know that, hey, I've been here a while and I can tell you right now that if you wanna stay alive, you're gonna have to get that ego in check. And so we're seeing John just basically taking in a lot. He's smart, at least smart enough to pick up a few terms here and there that people are telling him or that he's hearing. But really, I think what's important, what really helped him in this episode was when they were on that ship to Osaka, he is very seasoned in the water. And I feel like most Japanese seafarers at that point probably did not have a lot of experience outside of the sea around Japan and possibly going to China because I believe most of their travels back in that time would have been between Japan, China, and a few other uh, South Asian places. That would have been it. So point is, John has way more seafaring experiences, especially since he said he was down in Chile to start. So he's done South America. He's obviously in Europe. And 1600s, they would have also done the Americas as well. So he's seen a lot of different oceans, been in a lot of different conditions. And that experience literally saved those guys on that boat because clearly they did not know how to handle that storm. And the fact that he actually saved several of their lives, we saw that a few of them almost flew overboard and he literally pulled them over and saved them. He had no reason to, for being real, but him doing that, I think made them at least see him as less of a quote unquote barbarian. And we see that with that one guy, the names are gonna come guys, sorry. First episode, there's a lot of names thrown at me. So it's gonna take me a minute to know who's who. But then there's the guy, the uncle of the guy who is running the village that found the boat. He is underneath our lead character, but we see that he pretty much thinks that our lead character is gonna die and that he's already looking at what he can grab and who he can align with in order to make himself rich when that happens. So already I'm side-eyeing him because I'm like, our main character seems like he's a fair and honorable Lord. So I don't see why people are so, well, not all people, why some are so quick to backstab him, but clearly that man is greedy. But anyway, we see that him and John are butting heads initially, but then, with that whole situation between the boat where he clearly saw that John saved everyone and then John challenging him to not go over and rescue the other guy. That was kind of like their little head butting, but we meet because we're kind of on the same level moment. And I did like how that happened. And John actually started to understand that he does not know this culture at all. He does not know what these people are about. He does not understand what their values are. 
And when he saw that that one guy was about to commit seppuku because he thought he was gonna die, you know, because he couldn't get back up the hill, that really shook him. And so we see he kind of had a different, he finally bowed to this man because he wanted to, not because he was forced to. But I think he's starting to slowly get that these people are not quite what he thinks they are. And that's why I really like the conversations between him and the Spaniard because the Spaniard was really letting him know that, brother, you just don't understand these people. You don't know anything about them. You're coming in with your ideals and you're gonna have to let them go. Like he even said about, oh, they're godless savages. And he's like, or maybe they don't give a damn about what you think. <laughs> but anyway, we hear the Spaniard say, I need you to go upstairs and look out at Osaka as we're about to arrive. And you tell me if this looks like a place that's the not that's uh, behind. You let me know if you think Europe is the peak of civilization. And he did, and you can see that it hit him that, oh, oh. Because we have to realize too, for those who are unaware, back in this time during the 1600s, Japan, cities in Japan and in China were far larger than any European city. European cities were tiny little things compared to what the cities in Japan and China were back in this time. And they were also very advanced in many ways. The only thing they weren't advanced in at that point was shipmaking and weaponry, right? Because they didn't need those things. That wasn't a priority for them. But in almost every other way, these countries were far evolved than European countries were in many ways. And they had their own riches and their own ways of building things too. So anyway, so that was kind of John's arc. And he ended up in Osaka. And we found out that, oh, the very smart leader of their area, our main character, he of course has a spy who's living in that village. He's the one who let him know that the, the, the boat crashed, was on the boat. And also the fact that there were Western civilians on board. And we see that that one guy, the shady guy, um, who I just talked about, who almost committed seppuku, he was trying to keep all of that from his Lord because he was thinking he's gonna die anyway. So I'm gonna take what, I, take what I can first. But we see that he had to give it up begrudgingly. And so anyways, his spy let him know what was going on. And our lead character said, bring him to Osaka. And we found out that because our lead character is very aware of the fact that right now, if he's trying to go up against these other four kingdoms, he's gonna lose. He doesn't have the manpower nor the amount of people that he would need to do this. So he's gonna have to figure out another way to garner support to at the very least maintain the status quo. And we saw that there was that one woman who is, uh, looks like she's someone who takes care of the young Lord, the, the successor. And she was saying to him, like, we need another, we need another shogun. Like it's, I, hate, I hate to say it, but it's the only way to solve this issue because he's like, these these guys are gonna keep fighting. The guy who's leading the other three that formed this petition against you, he's gonna take them all out the second he takes you out because you're his biggest threat first and he's gonna take them out. So he's gonna basically create himself or make himself into a shogun. If you don't want that to happen and that young heir to end up also being a casualty of war, you're gonna have to become a shogun. And of course we hear him say, I don't wanna be like, that's not what I want. And if we, <laughs> As I've said many times, whenever someone, especially who is in a leadership role, does not want that leadership or doesn't want the power that comes with it, they are usually the best people to be in that role because they, te they tend to not abuse that power. They tend to actually care about the people around them and also not be so arrogant as to realize that they can actually ask for help and draw strength from people around them. The people who want the power, like that one arrogant guy that was in that first meeting, they're the worst people to be in power. So anyway, our lead character is realizing that he is gonna have to do something to strengthen his position. And now that is why he's thinking, I might have to start engaging this, this foreigner, this European, because one thing that they do know is that Europeans have weapons. And we heard that young man who's running the fishing village, he was saying that whatever happens with this war that's inevitable is whoever has the most weapons is really, or the strongest weapons are, is most likely gonna be the winner, right? Even if you have manpower, as we learned watching Blue-Eyed Samurai, you know, you can be the best swordsman in the world, but a gun's gonna take you out. <laughs> that's all there is to it. So. The more, whoever's got the most guns is really gonna be the person who wins this war. And this is really the advantage that this lead character may have is that if he's able to convince or somehow figure out some alliance with John to get more of these weapons into his kingdom, that could really turn the tide of this war. Again, I don't think he necessarily wants to do this and there's definitely gonna be opening doors for a lot more than what will benefit him by doing it, but desperate times as they say, right? So yeah, that was kind of the cool highlights of this episode. We kind of know where the pieces are being laid for this gigantic <laughs> war chess game that's about to kick off, but I like it. Like it's beautifully filmed. The scale of it is huge. Like the locations look amazing. You can tell they definitely put the money into filming here. Very interesting, really good start, I think. 
a lot. It was a long episode, but I think they really need to establish a lot from the get go so we could have a good idea of where we're gonna be going as this continues. And I feel like things are gonna speed up now that we've established where things are. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what the scale of this is. I don't know if we're actually gonna get to the war in this episode, or sorry, in this season, but if they are, then I feel like we're gonna get into it pretty quickly and that's why they spent so much time with exposition in this particular episode. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the rest of it goes. I know they released another episode, so I'll be watching that shortly. So please do look out for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.